Commissioner Rick Wilson asked the Housing and Neighborhood Development Manager to give us a status on the Polk Cares Program's Housing Assistance Initiative. Commissioner Wilson also started a series featuring the cities and towns in his district. The first segment featured the city of Bartow. So let's talk about Polk Cares. What are some of the things that, that we did? I, it, was, it was pretty amazing. I'm gonna tell you, you know, it's, I don't know exactly when the time was when Bill Beasley came to me and said, you know, we just, we just received $126 million from the feds wow. for COVID relief. And, and the, really the only stipulations on it was, you know, it had to be COVID related to help our community. There was like, uh, and don't hold, I'm not sure about the number, I'm gonna think there was 12 or 14 counties, the biggest counties in the, the state of Florida that was above 500,000 population received the, the money first. So, you know, the, the board, we sat down and talked about it, and of course we wanted to get it to the people. I mean, the people, that's when it was really, a lot of people had lost their jobs, a lot of people were you know, losing hours, businesses shut down. And so we said, well, we need to get it to our people, you know, as much as we can. Sounds real simple, but it's not. You know, it was, took a lot of planning and a lot of hard work. We had a great team put together. You know, at this point in time, we give away just about $70 million to individuals in this county and businesses. There's also a, a segment of um, Polk Cares that was specifically geared towards mortgage and, and rent assistance. What, Correct. what was that program? So actually, the first program that was talked about came directly to the local governments. The second batch of money came to the states, and the states decided to pass it through to the local governments. So each local government got their piece of the pie. All right, so for Hillsborough, I mean, excuse me, for Polk County, we got $1.9 million. That was directed for mortgage and rent assistance um, to help these clients. So from this point on, if they were delinquent, we could service them up until December if they were delinquent. So we're at this process, we're taking applications for them currently. Now we, we spoke a little bit about fraud. What were some of the eligibility requirements? Okay. What were some of the things we were doing to or asking for to prevent fraud? Okay, for this one, we actually were contacting the employers if they did not have the unemployment letter. We were contacting the mortgage holder or the landlords to verify that, yes, these clients are delinquent. So it was a little bit more rigorous because the state had additional rules outside of what the original CARES had provided to us. So the money didn't go directly to the person who was applying? Correct. It went directly to the landlords or, um, or the mortgage holder. Okay. You know, and one of the biggest ones that we have uh, requirements was you had to live in Polk County. And we had people out of Polk County Correct. applying for it. Osceola County, um, <laughs> some, someone from uh, Iowa. I mean, people were applying, yeah. people from Canada. There is a Polk County in Iowa, though. That's yes. a little cheeky. Yeah. So, so they, oh, yeah, did, they did put an application, and those got denied. Yeah, I mean, there's, wow. there's always somebody looking at it. But, it, it, but it, it, it's been a great program. Uh, you know, we've helped a lot of people. And, uh, and, and, and they needed, needed help. We're gonna talk about one of your favorite subjects. Yes, uh, you know, when I, when I was uh, running for this office, you know, uh, I've lived here in Polk County all my life, and so I've been all over this county, but you know, I, I knew there were some, uh, some areas that we needed to look at and, uh, in my district and on transportation, which was, you know, very dear to me. And, you know, there were three of them. I really, when I got elected, I said I wanted to really push. Uh, you know, the first one was uh, probably the uh, at Highway 60 and 80 foot road uh, traffic light there. It had a lot of problems there over the years, a lot of, a lot of accidents. You know, there'd been a lot of talk and, uh, you know, it, it was still being talked about, but I just wanted to get involved in it and, and make that push. And, you know, as I can say now, it has been, it's funded. It's, uh, we'll be in in the next, hopefully by the end of this year, that red light will be there. So I know there's gonna be a lot of people in the, on the 80 foot road area, Connersville area, Al Turris, just gonna be very happy for that. And I, I'm one of them. You know, and one of the second things that I, you know, really, really wanted to, to get moving even harder was the bridge down in 98 uh, in Fort Meade. 